What do you think, Roy? Has there been progress? Um, again, I think there's been ups and downs for Ollie, obviously, in his, his spell here. I think uh, last year, you're thinking they finished the season strongly, three semi-finals, but three semi-finals for Manchester United is not good enough. And we kind of were building the season up to be almost make or break for Ollie. And at this moment in time, it's not looking good for him. He, he talks about the players there, and, and I'm, I'm always intrigued. You know, I, we forgive players for most things, making mistakes or having an off day. But when you talk, when you when you listen to a manager and he's talking about well, we didn't start well and enthusiasm and not, I, I I scratch my head at players who don't have enthusiasm for a game of football. They spoke about the game during the week, the Champions League. Champions League games sometimes it's chalk and cheese compared to what a Premiership challenge brings to you. So the fact when players don't turn up today and don't have a go until the end when the race is almost over, they, they, they ha they'll have that now with this league campaign. I never thought for one minute they'd be challenging Liverpool and Man City, but the way they've started is, you know, the, the top four and all, this seems even out of reach. And at this early stage, and, and sometimes you say, well, there's no need to panic, but the results and the performance suggest you should be panicking because it's not been good enough. He says they're good boys and they want to win. I obviously I judge the players by their actions. We don't we don't see this from this group of players. We just don't see it. My eyes don't lie to me. I'd love to be sitting there saying they look like a great bunch of lads. They'll bounce back. Of course, football's all about disappointments. But this group, they had a dis their last huge disappointment was only three or four weeks ago against Spurs. It wasn't three or four months ago where you're thinking they've now won the next ten or fifteen games. This team kind of reacts for a few weeks, then kind of get carried away with themselves and think we're we're a team now. But you tell me, Roy. I mean is it not the, the responsibility of the manager to make sure those players are ready from the first minute? Truthfully, no. I don't think so. I'll argue all day with people. The manager's job, of course, he's got to oversee everything. But I never looked at a manager in all my career before the match. And I'm talking about great managers, some bad managers, going back to when I was eight, nine years of age. I never looked at a manager to say, are you going to mo motivate me today? That comes from within. That comes from your... Your DNA, what you stand for, your background, your family, your teammates. That doesn't... That, the guys turn up today, we're on about, we looked at the warm-up. I'm intrigued when I look at warm-ups. Like, Cavani never tried a leg. He actually didn't do a warm-up, did he? And then he's come on a sub for Manchester United going, can you get us back in the game? The guy, and, and all he's talking about, well, we have to get him up to speed. Sometimes it's up, it's up to the player to do something. It's, it, 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 Ollie will pay the ultimate price, obviously. Ollie will lose his job working with this group of players. As night follows day, that's what's going to happen. I've been saying it for the last month or two, but you still think, well, you never know. You never know in this game. Things might change. Things might change. And you think it's up to Ollie to motivate these players to turn up against Arsenal home. And people keep saying, well, the, the, Ollie mentioned there's no supporters. The stadiums are empty. This is still a great setting if you're a professional footballer to play at Old Trafford. By the way, I think boy, it's beautiful. I think it's, it's lucky there's quite. no supporters in there because imagine playing oh, like that and against uh, Tottenham. Of course, with the fans I'm, I'm talking in about here. the players. I'm talking about the players. If you come with all Trafford here, even I still love the look of this place when it's empty. It's fantastic. Tim, what's your your view on that? That motivation point. No, when when Roy manager. talks about not needing motivation himself, the changing room that he was in, he's a leader, right? And what I'm going to say here. In my mind, about when I was eight, nine no, years of no, age. But, but Roy, the key, the key, what I'm saying. There is no leaders out there. There's no leadership. And he's, Roy's talking about actions. That could be a tackle. That could be on the front foot. That could be like pull the line up. That could be like clearing a ball off the line. Roy's talking about players that he's played with, with influence, that influence the game through actions. And I can understand that. But when you watch Arsenal against Leicester and you see the high press, how aggressive they were. In, in this half here, Arsenal were just outside the 18-yard box on a corner, all four. And they were trying to suffocate them, press them in, win the second ball, win the third ball. Tim, Surely Arsenal, you're prepped for that. You Surely you're prepped for that. We're building Arsenal up to be some sort of... Arsenal lost to Leicester. Yeah, but they won. And they, they lost to... But they, you mentioned but the you know high what? press. They lost you know to, did they, they lose to Leicester? They lost. Did they lose to Leicester? They know why they Brilliant. lost. That's, what they, that's the name of the game. Mikel knows the reason why they lost. Mikel has lost three games They missed their chances in the first half. They missed their chances in the first half. Lacazette, right on the line. How many league games have but, Arsenal but, lost but this listen, season? But the key thing is, Arsenal are progressing because there's an identity. There's a formula to the way they play. They, they, they play out from the back and they'll keep playing out from the back. And that's why I think Mikel deserves a lot of praise. And I agree with you with the leadership. These players playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world shouldn't need to. How many games have Arsenal lost this season? 
they've lost, lost a few games, but they know they've why they've lost. lost. Okay. Right. Yeah, but there's three, but they know why they've lost. They finish the game and I they know why they lost. Yeah, but they finish the well, game and they're learning. They won today, one against the Port United team. All of a sudden, now what well, the new Bayern Munich. Yeah, do me a favor. Yeah, I know. Lost to Liverpool, Manchester City, and Leicester. But inadvertently, it will always fall at the manager's door. When you look at what's going on right now, and he has to accept that this isn't good. Now, Manchester United, four home games, not won any of them. You know, you can talk about no crowds, whatever you want, the system, how you're you playing. Do not think that's a factor, the lack of, the lack of crowds, not, lack not of atmosphere, no, yeah? Not because of the performances, of what, the, what I would be worried about. If I'm the owners, if I'm the chief exec, I'm looking at the performances. Are you looking at the tactical plan as well? I don't, ta it's not about tactics. It's not about the tactical plan for Well, right Tim is now. saying it is about tactics, well, because I'm, that's I'm, what's I'm, won Arsenal the game I'm today. looking at the performances. I'm looking at the Tottenham game. When I'm seeing people not doing their jobs, I'm watching people run past them. I'm not seeing people putting a shift in. That's what's more damning for me. Of course you want a tactical situation where you know your system and how you're going to play each week. But I'm looking more at the body language of the United players and where they're going in a direction right now. And you can keep throwing money at the problem. I listened to all that like, because it was, I was in a situation at Liverpool where we were we went many years without winning the league. And we threw everything out. We threw money. You can keep throwing managers. In the, in the end, they find Jurgen Klopp and they win the title. It took years for that to happen. And it might take years for Manchester United to turn it around. But I look at this squad right now and I don't care who you bring in. That's a jigsaw puzzle with about four or five pieces missing. That's not that easy to get that team you playing agree, well. No, I just think that everyone's saying Man United need to sign. Who do they need to sign? Like, someone give me the million answer. Million pounds they spent since Ferguson yeah, went. But, but what does Man United need? Is it a striker? Is it a wing backs? What? It, like, you know, Gary Neville's saying that they need to spend better. On what? You, well, you should maybe get Arteta in because obviously he's another messiah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> and even we, we talk about it. Crystal Palace came here and ripped United apart. United gave a sloppy penalty. And De Gea, I think, had one save to make. So we can, yeah, we'll give Arsenal a bit of credit. But don't think it was necessarily done because Arsenal, Arsenal didn't have to be fantastic Fantastic today. It was United to the start of the game, lack of quality, sloppiness from Pogba. That's what gifted them the game. It's going to be a difficult one because of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, because he's a favourite. Everybody loves him. It's to a certain extent, if, the day when he has, if he has to go, but it can't carry on like this. I mean, when he first came to the club, he wasn't. He was almost. He came in as a stopgap, looking to get the next manager in. He did ever so well. Things started well for him. But if you actually look at where we are now, 100 games in, what's changed? Man United should not be in that position in the league table. I don't care if there's no crowds. That is not good enough. So if you're the manager, you're always going to be under scrutiny, be under pressure because, you know, the players you've got, how, he, how he's trying to set the team up, everyone thinks they're a tactical genius now. He's not motivating <laughs> these players well enough right now. I suppose the ultimate question in terms of Manchester United is, is about closing the gap on Liverpool and Manchester City. Do you oh, think well. they can do that with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the, at the helm, Tim? The, the key element here, we're, we're, we're going around the houses because if Man United are not at their best then Arsenal need to come here and take advantage of that. If they've not beaten the top six sides, it's a big goal for Aubameyang, it's a big goal for, 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 for Arsenal, and, and it's a massive win. But I'm just saying, it, a lot of it was provoked. Arsenal, I thought, the good thing about the game is, that, is, is they were on the front foot. It, they showed some intensity, they showed a style. Man United are, are in a position, if, if they won today and Arsenal had lost, then we, let's flip it. We'll all be talking about Mikel losing how many games in a row. So it, it's... It is what it is. You know, yeah, I don't Roy, think we can uh, doubt that Arsenal are going the right way. I look at, I look at what Mikel Arteta is doing. I love it. I think it's good. He's signing good... But, but, but they're signing the players that they need. They've identified at the start of the year. They need a midfield well, for years. It's gotten by that they've needed a midfield player that can tackle, can do everything. They've bought him in. They've sent a back position. After we talked about the defensive... Like, the stability that Arsenal haven't got. They bring in someone in Gabriel who looks a real player today. Mm. So... They are doing things the right way, but they've got, an, obviously, an understanding of what they need to bring in. I look at United and I'm thinking, well, they're bringing Van der Beek, £40 million. He must be thinking, what am I doing here? What's going Where am I going to play? He's not getting a sniff. You know, Roy, you spoke about picking him at the start of the game. He's not even getting a look at He must be so frustrated. No, I just think that they've obviously had a look. Mac Tomlin's been in the team for the last year or two. Fred's been in the team, manager of all that ago. So why not go with him? More a case of... Well, I don't, I don't fancy the other lads. Give him a go. And even when he comes on, you think, well, he's just neat and tidy and he's got a good touch. But obviously you want a bit more than that. And we're under, listen, we all have a soft spot for Ali, decent guy, but he's under no illusion. The pressure now will be building and building and the longer this kind of run goes on. I never thought for one second Man United would be getting anywhere obviously near Liverpool and Man City, forget that. But I'm thinking, you know, obviously certainly be getting in the top four, staying in the race at this race, at this rate, they're in no race. They're just drifting. 